God is with them. Don't you know when God is with somebody? Those people, they don't go through madness. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Tell Jubilee House, the Lord is against you. Tell Jubilee House, judgment is on your head. Tell El Kufuado, you are under judgment. Tell him. I told you the mind of it. Let me tell you. This occupied Jubilee House demo, don't take it see, Don't take it lightly. You better take it serious. That is another emergence. You see those people out there? Don't take them for joke. Something is bubbling in our hearts. And that's something, if you don't take it, will explode. I'm telling you, what they are doing there is more dangerous than a coup. They are telling you they don't like the style of leadership. Dear the American, they can stand in a ring, they don't care, they can leave their jobs and don't joke with that too. There are mutinies all over. The Bible said kingdom will rise against kingdom and nation shall rise against nation. Yeah, that is our thing. They are, you are seeing Matthew chapter 24 and you are seeing from verse number 5 and 6. That is what you are seeing. Jensen Wunu. Jensen Wunu. What's up for you? Who bet you? Who bet you? Who bet you? Who The same thing happened with MPP. I mean, this is not Alan saying this. This is the majority of Ghanaians looking for change, particularly the youth. And since the two dominant parties are not providing a roadmap or a path towards change, I'm offering myself to lead them in this process of change. And, and as I mentioned earlier, this is not just being self-serving. Uh, and this is not just a cosmetic exercise. This is giving them an opportunity to lead their own revolution in this country so that they can control their own destiny. You know? And I'm, I'm amazed at their, their response. And since they took charge of the campaign, uh, even uh, without the benefit of maybe many years of experience uh, in either in uh, corporate setting or other organizations, it is just natural that the, the, their capacity to learn very quickly, the energy that they bring you know, to work, it, it's amazing. And so I'm uh, even more encouraged now than before that I've invested now my own political future uh, in the hands of, of, of the young people. You know and, and, you know, we just started a, a volunteer call-up. Volunteer a volunteer call, call yeah, let's say, volunteer sign up, you know, uh, for, for people to uh, to join the, uh, the movement for change. And it is amazing the number of people who are signing. They, just, this is just a first, second day. If I tell you the statistics, you, you'll be shocked. You know. So it is just a reflection of the fact that this is what people were looking for. People were looking for somebody who will represent that change and so probably i'm in the right place at the right time and it could only be by divine instruction you know one of the people that believe that they use this lazy no 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 in actual fact that is what i'm saying that if you look at the kind of things that i even did in the past you see elements of you know, youth uh, 
involvement. But in this particular case, it is not just about accommodating the youth. This is about putting them in charge. Putting them in charge. And so far, I feel very confident that I've taken the right decision. Some of the plans that you want to uh, implement, we have the digitalization uh, agenda. Okay. Some of them are uh, uh, you see? from the party that you came from. Yeah. But it, is it different? Is what you want to do different from what we're seeing uh, as connected to the MPP? Yes, because if you read the element uh, of my digitalization program, yeah. yes, you find that it is not just public sector digitization reform. We are talking about bringing digitization to the doorstep of the average Ghanaian. And so it, it, it goes uh, much deeper than just uh, public sector mentioning digitization uh, in the public sector. But it is also linked to how we make the industrial uh, transformation and agricultural revolution you know, more efficient and more effective. So all the 15 components really of the GTP, they reinforce each other. Yes, I mean, the way we mainstream digitization into education. It's all part of it. You said uh, undertaking comprehensive review of existing reforms. Yes, that's with the free agents. Yes, uh, yes. so you, you, you review it. Yes, yes, absolutely. I mean, uh, look. That, that means it, to scrap it. No, no, that's not <laughs> to scrap it. I'm saying review. I mean, you can't run. You can't run a program for seven years and not to have a, a comprehensive So review doesn't mean scrubbing it? No, 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 no. Okay. But what I'm saying is that we all know that the costs associated with implementing the free SHS um, is a major challenge for government. Mm -hmm. So if we are going to continue with the free SHS as is, then we have to start thinking about finding a more sustainable way of funding uh, free SHS. Uh, and the other aspects of, for example, the NDC, NDC's program for community day schools, I think it is something that has to be uh, supported, you know, it's uh, not mutually exclusive with free SHS, you know. And so there are many, many things that as an independent candidate, an honest broker, you, it is not for you to be de-escalating what another party has done because you are now in government. Yours is to make sure that the program works for Ghana, whether it is started by MPP or started by NDC. Your interest is, will it work for Ghana? And that's what my movement for change is about. They died! Kidney failure every single day! They die! But what do you know? You let them use you! You let the government use you as a tool when you cannot even afford basic health care! You cannot afford it! If something happens to you today, you will get nothing from the government! You will get a story gift and little amount to your family and you will be gone! You will be gone! But you brutalize us! You arrest us! You treat us as a sworn enemy! I'm not going to do that. 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 I
What you doing there? God will touch you. But this is just a truth. God will touch you. Touch you. Each and every one of you that treats us as the enemy. God will judge you. God will judge you. And if the captain is there, you will suffer the most. Bully, you will suffer the most. You die every single day. You die every single day. You rock me. What you get from it? You will die poor. This is what you The way it is, you will die poor. But God will be good. You will be sorry. You will be sorry. You will be sorry. They pay you money. And you think you are all right. this morning. You think you are all right. It's what I said. Nobody. Wait till you can afford. Go ahead and see this guy. This is what you want. Wait till you can afford. And he died. He died. 24 year old. He died. Not because of sickness. The couch is held there. True. True. I swear. God will touch you. What you did on Thursday. God. My lady. My lady. Come now. 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 How can anybody tell this present government or their opposition that God is with them? Who has the boldness to talk that nonsense? God is with them. Don't you know when God is with somebody? Unyamika will be more. Those people, they don't go through madness. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Tell Jubilee House, the Lord is against you. Tell Jubilee House, judgment is on your head. Tell the Kufuado, you are under judgment. Tell him. I told you the mind of it. Let me tell you, this occupied Jubilee House demo, don't take it see, don't take it lightly. You, you better take it serious. That is another emergency. You see those people out there? Don't take them for joke. Something is bubbling in our hearts. And that's something if you don't take it, will explode. I'm telling you, what they are doing there is more dangerous than a coup. They are telling you they don't like the style of leadership. Dear the American, they can However, the MPP, as it exists now, has very little resemblance to the party that I joined in 1992 and helped to Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Their party has been hijacked by a selected group of party leaders and elders, government appointees, behind, behind their curtain power brokers and some unscrupulous party apologies. It was my fervent wish, it was my fervent wish, 
to use the vehicle of their party to bring my God-given talents, experience, and knowledge applied both locally and internationally over a period of 46 years to serve our dear nation, Ghana, at the highest level of executive authority. It is abundantly clear to me that my services and contributions to the party are not appreciated. And that my continual stay in the party will create further tension and divisions, which is an exact replay of the circumstances that led to my decision to resign from the party in 2008. Fellow countrymen and women, under the circumstances and given the context provided, I wish to use this platform to announce that I'm honorably resigning with immediate effect. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much. It is hashtag Occupy Jalabi House, day three. And we are right in front of the 37 military hospital. Now they are marching towards the Jubilee House. And it looks like there has been a standoff between them and the police. And they were, they were earlier on, the, the police earlier on mounted a barricade, preventing them from moving. And now they are here, wanting still to move to the Jubilee House. And this is what they want. They want their petition to be taken by the president. And speaking to some of the protesters, they said the president does not take them seriously. Else he would have come to receive the petition or not be prevented from going to the Jubilee House. This is what is happening now. They are chanting the, the Ghana National Anthem. That's, that's what they are doing now. I'm not like Allah, who is so gentle. Let them try and they will see what will happen. They see the magic and the soul. Whether you like it or not, Ghana, for the youth of this country, I'll put my life on the line. From Central Region all the way to Adansi area. As I see at the research, actually I said, we don't need to go and buy ceramic tiles from China. We can build ceramic factories in Ashanti region. And the first ceramic factory, you know, you best see the former KBL as I said. So. Magazine for magazine for any school of engineering ever tech ever come home. You have see tractor assembly plant in Ashanti region. Ministers of greed, ministers of greed, term of greed. I'm not like Allah, who is so gentle. Let them try and they will see what will happen. I'm promising you, within 18 months of a new government of the NPP under my leadership, the face of our country, Ghana, is going to change. Within 18 months 
of a new government of the NPP under my leadership. The face of our country in Ghana is going to change. Within 18 months of a new government of the NPP under my leadership, the face of our country in Ghana is going to change. Electricity tariff, no, they are bad, but this so we're coming to reduce electricity tariffs. I'm not making sense. I'm in the middle of the city, you know. And yet, to me, I'm not quite for facet. They bought the bomb of Crown, no, my classic gun of Rosica, about the same code of war. Okay. Yeah, nothing I'm not going to do. Yeah, but. เดินเสียเปล่าเอ็บบอลแม่มูเอ็นเสียยาเอ็บเป็นชุดยามบ้านนะเอ็บชุดพ่อเอ็มเอสิก้าเอ็นอาหุ่นโตเอ็มเอ
Those who think Alan is not relevant. If Alan is not relevant in Ashanti region, if Alan is not relevant in MPP, Alan is relevant in Ghana here. Yes. What you want to say? ADT Alan at home. I want to be station. Want to be just a small boy. We are small boy. Want to be in just a small boy. Regional chairman, voter, regional chairman, have turned national health council into hooliganism group. Who yes. called national council the highest body of MPP? Now for two weeks, we may be poor for ten times more than that. Now I will hope. I tell him, I'm going to tell him. Let him chair November 4th. I'll give them show down. What is the difference between the ordinary thief and a political thief? Number one, the ordinary thief steals your money, your bag, your watch, and your jewelry, isn't it? But the political thief steals your future, your career, your education, your health, and your business. Number two, the hilarious part is that the ordinary thief will choose whom to rob. But you are the one who choose the political thief to rob you. Because we choose them. We vote them. We blindly say we are not blind. Who is deceiving who? The ridiculous part of the whole issue is that we will fight to defend and protect our belongings from the ordinary thief. Is it not? But we fight each other to defend and protect the political team. Is that not what we do? Thugs will be fighting themselves to protect those that are stealing our career, stealing our job, stealing our health, stealing our success. What a shame. 
This country is in serious trouble, ladies and gentlemen. We are in serious trouble. We need to rescue this country, ladies and gentlemen. The presidency has been so depraved, so, so muddied, so dirty, that I tell you in all sincerity as a Ghanaian, that I feel terribly sad today as a Ghanaian. We need to rescue this country. Wallahi. Insha Allah. Please don't cry. We shall rescue our country. Government is broke, government is broke. The people are spending billions to go inside the government that is broke. Have you ever seen a minister who resigned because government is broke before? Government has no money. Have you ever seen a governor who said, uh, ladies and gentlemen, when I was elected, I thought the government had money. Now I discover government has no money, I resign. Have you ever seen it? Government has no money, but they are bringing money out at election time. Where is that money coming from? So they are lying. What is happening is that there are two types of wicked people in government. Type one, they eat current money. Any money they find in government, they will eat it. They are wicked about that one. There is type two. Type two, they eat current money and future money. They will say, ah, oh, um, my term will end next year. When I leave, how will I eat money? Let me borrow money now. I'm borrow money of the future and eat it now. Right, good morning. Thank you very much for joining us. It's a beautiful Tuesday morning and we are happy to be here in the studios, of course, for God and country. This is Good Morning Ghana and we are coming your way live from our studios here at Ridge in Accra. And uh, we'll be running through the stories on the front pages of the newspapers pretty shortly. Let me say a very good morning to you. Randy Abbey, wherever you're watching us from, I'm privileged to be seated here this morning representing you i'll quickly do the stories on the front pages when i come back i'll take a quick break and then we get into the details of the stories as captured by the newspapers we don't have daily graphic this morning but let me go straight to the ghanaian times on the front page of the ghanaian times we have at world mental health day mha to rid streets of mental patients to restore Dignity. Uh, Professor Pinaman Apau is the Chief Executive Officer of the Mental Health Authority. Theresa Kufour, E.T. Mensa Pass On. You have a picture of the late Theresa Kufour, um, former First Lady of the country, on the front page of the Ghanaian Times. ECN's Limited Voter Registration Exercise. And Abide. By security arrangements, please urge minority occupy BOG protesters. That's the Ghanaian Times newspaper. Daily Guide. Daily Guide. Killer houseboy pleads guilty. John Alista is captured as he was leaving the courtroom. And uh, 25 Jailed 85 years for Galamse. Gofred Eboa Dami, the Attorney General, is here. Voter registration ends. And Jane Mensa is also here on the front page of the Daily Guide newspaper. 13,000 <coughs> traders declare for Baumia. And that's um, in the Ashanti region. It's captured here on the daily front page of the Daily Guide. Nana. NPP mourn late Theresa Kufour. That's the Daily Guide newspaper. The New Crusading Guide. The New Crusading Guide. 25 persons jailed for Galamsey offenses in Takwa. And government to pilot aviation and aerospace engineering in 12 senior high schools. In team confers with APC chairman of Nigeria. In Ghana Education Service, Ministry of uh, Education, swerve Ghana Health Service over free medical screening for senior high school students. Current state of NPP not guaranteed to retain power. A free Akutu says so. FDA presents findings on research on. Medical safety up. 
That's the new Crusading Guide newspaper. The Insights. The Inside newspaper. Ken Japon. He says NPP is looting Ghana like there is no tomorrow. Nana likely or Alan. Alan. Alan likely to sweep NPP votes. Ken Japon says so. And Abosil Kanspe Pazile's bare teeth at GRA. We will not stand idly by. Mali warns against repeat of NATO's Libyan war in Niger. That's the inside newspaper. Daily Post. Daily Post. Occupy BOG demo today. Occupy BOG demo 8 a.m. on Tuesday, October 3rd, 2023. Theme. Stop the stealing we are suffering. Convergent point, circle, interchange, obra sport. And uh, you have a picture of the governor of the Bank of Ghana, Ernest Kobna Yudu Addison, here on the front page of the Daily Post, and it says he must go. NPP is looting Ghana as if there is no tomorrow. Ken Japan explodes. And food for thought. There is no power higher than the power of the people. Turkish President Tayyip Erdogan says that one. The Daily Statesman. The Daily Statesman. The Daily Statesman. 25 Galamseyas jailed. 25 Galamseyas jailed. Prince Guma urges NPP to tidy up for 20. 24. A Kufuado optimistic of impact of STEM policies. And Ochehini exploitation of African youth in Gulf region must end. Uh, that's the Daily Statesman newspaper. The Finder. The Finder. Educho migrates education to online, starting with 30 schools and tablets for each student. NPP, Ekufuado, Baumia, others, Mount Theresa, Kufo, long queues on final day of voter registration in Accra. Winner of flag bearer race has a lot of work to do. Dr. Efriye Akutu says that one, Exempt medication and dialysis kits from taxes and duties. Former President John Dramani Mahama says so. And I now have uh, that of the daily graphic. It says, Galamse fight. Daily graphic, Galamse fight. 21 jailed 340 years. And Manli Dada. African Unity Schools renovation begins today. That's the Daily Graphic newspaper. Let me come back to the studio here. And uh, from wherever you're watching us from, this is Good Morning Ghana. You want to stick and stay with us. We'll take a quick break. When we get back right here in the studio, we will begin the discussion. Stay with us.
ready for something refreshing and great tasting for your kids' enjoyment? Angel Cola! For your graduation enjoyment? Angel Cola! Beach Hangout? Angel Cola! For all your refreshing moments? Angel Cola! For your parties, get-togethers, events, and celebrations, enjoy a chilled bottle of Angel Cola. Ready, dear Grandma, today is your day. Over to you. Thank you. Enjoyment Cola. Angel Cola. The Enjoyment Cola. Enjoy all your moments and fun time with Angel Cola. This advert is FDA approved. Anti-cavity. Gum protection. Brighter teeth and fresh bread. I'm a fat missy way. The patch of bantama. Matches. That's a cycle. It's a smile. The fresh bread. Me, Jiddy said we used to kill 360 toothpaste. Send me kind. Kill 360 toothpaste. That's Kia. Kill 360 toothpaste. It's a gum protector. Only him jum kasan kasan kasan. He ne kosen. Kill 360 did the way. It's cool mint. Gives me fresh breath and your confidence booster. And you will see so finin kika when you ne ye. Kill 360 toothpaste. Happy smile. Kill 360 toothpaste. Anti cavity, gum protection, brighter teeth, and fresh breath. Kill. Happy smile. This advert is FDA approved. Betway is your gateway to a theme park full of gaming excitement. A whirlpool of wonder where your favorite games come to life. Where you can take to the skies with max payouts that reach into the millions. All in the palm of your hand. Visit betway.com.gh. Terms and conditions apply. Betway is regulated by the Gaming Commission of Ghana. No under 18. Bet responsibly. Betway. Bet your way. To help meet your business and private printing needs successfully, we have just the right products and services. At Appointed Time Printing Limited, we specialize in digital printing, offset printing, packaging and security printing. Our innovative designs and complete professional touch on our print products such as posters, flyers, brochures, magazines, call cards and any other print solution of your choice ensure that our customers are are always happily connected to their audience. With our security printing section, our clients are assured of a highly secured and confidential work process from start to finish. At a point in time, our prices are very, very competitive. Locators are the old GNTC building near Swansea Shopping Arcade, Accra. Contact us on 0501-454165, 0501-454165. Six seven appointed time printer limited. Our printing is the solution. Enjoy the fruits of your labor, they say. But as humans, aging and physical infirmity stands our way of enjoying our mansions and homes. It often becomes challenging, if not impossible, to use our stairways day in, day out. With portable American pneumatic vacuum elevators, PVEs, you are assured of unlimited enjoyment of your mansions and homes. It's a self-supported elevator for vertical movement of humans and goods at homes and offices. The original comes in three custom-made models with wheelchair accessibility call it luxury but it's a necessary imperative for vertical mobility do not let aging or infirmity limit you get one for your easy vertical mobility at home it's affordable and can be installed in just three days without modification to your existing building it's however easier to incorporate it at the construction stage we also have traditional fuji elevators and escalators for your high-rise buildings and malls visit lifts and elevators company limited at sakumono for for your elevators nationwide for free consultation to call or whatsapp us on 0200-535-515 lifts and elevators the elevator people in life choice is good but choice plus safety is way better your safety and comfort is paramount under the cylinder recirculation model you can buy lpg in a safe environment all cylinders are inspected and maintained to the best safety standards, so your safety is assured. Just take your empty cylinder to the nearest exchange point and swap it for a filled cylinder. 
different cylinder sizes will be available to meet your pocket size. Imagine cooking in a smoke-free environment. This will improve the health and well-being of you and your family. Choose LPG in a safer model of distribution. Cylinder recirculation model. Securing your safety. Creating more jobs. A message from the National Petroleum Authority under the patronage of the Ministry of Energy. Inside Black Star Press Limited, grow inside the invective minds, evolving concepts and the creative trends. The printing press you need now. Witness the beauty, diversity and natural wonder with our works. Inside Black Star Press Limited, in association with Lionhead Group of Companies. Call us now on 0200-880-000 for all your print works. Black Star Press Limited, a worldwide reputation for quality printing. My son, there's more blessing in giving than receiving. When you fear for you now, and come the makers in Sri Anu the pneumatological abrasion of the Lord revealed unto me this night that me and my household should go out into the world and bless the world. Makers Electronics Company Limited am up to 67% discount. I was selected appliances as well. And to do makers this year. This is what I call quintessential immaculatability. Jamu! She said the Makers Electronics Company Limited. I will tie for Burkina Highway. I'm a Samai Zongo Junction. I the K Pharmacy Dining. Oh, yeah, Fatima and Boga Junction. Ashaman, Valko Flat, Kumasi, Ahinema Koko Bain, Asafu Wachi Hospital Junction. Sekwadi, Efiye Kuma, Number 9 Market. Two and tell mom and dad about the Maker's Blessing Attack program. From 0552-222-253 and 0552-222-254. Terms and conditions apply. The same in Gato Moon, I'm a CC. ECG is now cashless. My studio lights are always on. I never run out of power. With the ECG Power app, I'm able to report an issue, check my credit, buy power, all in real time, whenever I need to. I don't worry if ECG vendors are closed. In the comfort of wherever I may be, I still keep my lights on thanks to the ECG Power app. You can simply use mobile money wallets, Visa or MasterCard if that's not attract e-levy. With the ECG Power app, you are totally covered. To download, go to the App Store or the Google Play Store. You don't have a smartphone? Don't worry. No internet? Don't worry. No data? Do not worry. Just dial star 226 hash. This is what I call convenience in your hands. ECG Power app. A yes, simple path. Right, welcome back from the break. Let me say good morning to you once again wherever you're watching us from. This is Good Morning 
Ghana, and we are happy to be here this morning for God and Country. My guests are already seated here in the studio, but let me quickly run through um, some of my terms of those who are making it possible for us to come your way every morning, and then I'll get to my guests. Um, the Ghana Energy Awards is here again, and it is the seventh edition. This year's theme is Ghana's Energy Transition Framework, Sector Institutions, as building blocks for the 2030-2040 target. Now, this is the best part. You can nominate yourself, someone, or even an institution for these categories. The categories are Visionary Leadership Award, Chief Executive Officer of the Year, Energy Investment Impact Award, Energy Institution of the Year, the Energy Signature Award, Energy Company of the Year, Energy Think Tank of the Year, Rising Star, Energy Reporter of the Year, and many more. Visit www.ghanaenergyawards.com for more information or call 055-930-0631 for sponsorship. The Ghana Energy Awards is endorsed by World Energy Council Ghana, and the Ministry of Energy. It is validated by Mazars Ghana as well. The Ghana Energy Awards, seven years of redefining excellence. And uh, let me do this one too. Lift and elevators. So enjoying the fruits of your labor is an important or is as important as enjoying the mansions of your labor. The pains of climbing stairs when not exercising could be challenging for all ages. But worry no more. Lift and elevators have got you covered with the best portable American pneumatic vacuum elevators on the market today. It is a simple self-supported elevator for both homes and offices. And guess what? It can lift your goods too. Wheelchairs can fit in. And they come in three custom-made models. It is affordable and can be installed within three days. Visit lifts and elevators at Sakumono or just call them on 0200-535-515. Or send a mail to elevators at gmail.com for consultations and the best solutions in easy vertical movement. So that's lifts and elevators and uh, star moto third party extra also says our oh, star assurance is telling us that it has launched another innovative product star moto third party extra which aims to transform third party motor insurance in ghana this policy is a notable departure from the traditional restrictions of third party policies which typically only covers liability for damage and injuries caused by the policyholder to third parties. The new Star Motor Third Party Extra Policy provides coverage for glass damage, encompassing or encompassing windscreens, side mirrors, window glasses, vent glasses, surrounds, and inside rear view mirrors of the vehicle of the policyholder. Pay as little as 100 Ghana cities in addition to your standard Mutu third party premium to enjoy this extra cover. Terms and conditions apply. Star Assurance, your solid partner. Well, you're back. We are back here in the studio, and um, I'll go straight to what's happening. But let me first of all introduce to you my guest in the studio. and. Uh, Honorable Al Hassan Suini is the Member of Parliament for the Tamale North constituency. He is seated to my extreme left. Honorable, good morning to you. Thank you very much good for morning, joining Nancy. us. I hope you are doing very well. Alhamdulillah, I'm tired. You're right. And then Kofi Tuntu is a spokesperson for the government of Ghana. He is seated to my immediate left. Kofi, good morning to you as well. A very good morning to you. And I hope you are doing very great. Uh, very well, very well. And a very good morning to my. Mm. War, warmonger. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, so he is wearing the uh, war ou outfit this morning. Mm. Uh, <laughs> and, and so you think he's going to war? Uh, well, it looks like it. Mm. It looks like it. Mm. He's looking nice, though. But are you going to war anyway? 
Occupy, <laughs> occupy. We can, we can begin with that. Occupy BOG demonstration. I'll, I'll just watch it to see if I have um, my correspondent Vanessa on the line. She's actually following the demonstration this morning. Um, if we have her, if we don't, we'll just come back to the studio. But anytime when we get her, we'll make sure that she gives us or she keeps us up to speed. What's, what's happening? But don't let me come to you. Uh, we have the shots of, of her, but we don't have her on the line yet. But let me. Yeah, okay. let me say good morning to our viewers, especially the good people of the Tamale North constituency. But um, I'm surprised that Kofi is actually worried about um, war in Ghana and not worried that war torn countries seem to be doing very well in, that Ghana <laughs> is currently doing. I mean, if you look at our inflation rate, our unemployment rate, and you co compare it to countries like Niger, countries like uh, Burkina Faso, and even uh, Ro Russia and Ukraine, you wonder if it is not better for us to even have a war. But uh, the truth is that the minority in parliament is not calling for a war, mm -hmm. uh, except one that is against corruption, except one that is against mismanagement, and that is uh, a literal war. Uh, the fact is that we are calling on all Ghanaians from all walks of life to join us, to march peacefully, peacefully, in protest against the level of mismanagement that we have seen, that in our view has been feted by the recklessness of uh, the Bank of Ghana governor, uh, otherwise known as Addison Printer, and then the two deputies and others. We know that they do not have the ultimate responsibility uh, or they cannot be held responsible ultimately for uh, the country's woes. But we think that um, their role uh, cannot also be, be, be ignored, especially if you consider the fact that um, they had what it took per legislation to have uh, mitigated uh, some of the effects of, of the economic crisis that we are going through. Kindly, Look, kindly indulge me. I think I have Vanessa on the line. I'll come back okay. to you, but uh, let's see what's happening so far. Uh, Vanessa, if you can hear me, uh, what exactly is happening? Where are you now, and uh, what's happening there? Uh, that's sights and scenes from the brass port. Um, if we get Vanessa on the line, but she's there, and uh, those pictures are from her. Let's come back to the studio. When we have her on the line, we'll get her to speak, if she's able to speak to you. One or two people. Honorable, uh, you're on the floor. Yes, so I was just saying that they have what it takes to have uh, mitigated against some of the effects of the economic crisis that mm. we are going mm. through. And you see, we shouldn't take this lightly. You're talking about a country that has gone to the IMF. And the hope of many is that a three billion IMF bailout is what will help us come out of the doldrums. And the result from Bank of Ghana is that it has been mismanaged to a point where it lost about 80 billion, you know, Ghana cities. And 80 billion Ghana cities is about two times or three times what we are expecting to get from the IMF, you know, to um, uh, come out of the woods. Mm -hmm. There are those who say, yes, the Bank of Ghana is, uh, you know, a lender of last resort, and so it wasn't set up uh, to make profit. Uh, as much as I agree with that, it is important that we also uh, remember that even if it was not set up to make uh, profit, it was not also set up to make losses. And obviously, uh, it is beneficial to us as a country, and the evidence is there. If it is making profit as an institution, even though it is not necessarily set up to make profit. The evidence is there for us to see that if it is making profit, it is for our own good. For example, the Bank of Ghana Hospital is as a result of the bank making profit mm -hmm. from the year 2012 when it started making profit of about $1.5 a year. And that is why the bank was able to invest in the constraint, into the construction of the Bank of Ghana Hospital, which today is saving lives. I mean, when the dialysis unit of the Kolibu Teaching Hospital uh, 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 shut down, many 
uh, 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 patients uh, resorted to the services of uh, the dialysis or the renal unit at the Bank of Ghana Hospital. Mm -hmm. But for that, you can imagine that the number of people we have lost as a result of the Kolebu dialysis unit shutting down uh, would have been higher. And so, yes, the bank may not be set up to make profit, but it, there's evidence that when it makes profit, it benefits all of us. Again, the Bank of Ghana, even in this uh, 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 state of mismanagement, have pointed to us their intention to construct uh, a new Bank of Ghana office, a 20-story uh, uh, office, we are told, to uh, 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 prepare for uh, an eventual or uneventual uh, uh, earthquake. And uh, apart from the corruption or the seeming corruption leading transaction of it, the fact is that we are told that they considered this construction because of the profits that they made in the past. And so clearly, yes, the bank may not be set up to make profit. Uh, it is supposed to be a lender of last resort. But when it makes profit, it benefits all of us. So it is not uh, 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 correct for us to just dismiss uh, the, 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 the issue of the bank running at a loss. And how did the bank get to this? You had a Bank of Ghana governor that saw nothing wrong with, you know, um, um, overexposing itself to the recklessness of, 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 of the government. I mean, if you had the uh, finance minister whose appetite for borrowing uh, knows no bounds, and as a result, uh, uh, you know, he borrowed till we were sacked, let me put it that way, or dismissed from the uh, capital market. And then he started depending on the Bank of Ghana and they were printing money like there's no tomorrow, to borrow the phrase of uh, Kennedy at Japan, like there's no tomorrow. They were just printing their money like there's no tomorrow. And like Kennedy at Japan puts it, as if they were stealing it and taking it out of this country as if there's no tomorrow. I mean, it's, it's, it cannot just be seen to be politics as usual. Something must give. 70 billion, we are told, uh, uh, about 70 billion, we are told, was printed for this government to just blow on, on nothing because we have nothing to show for, you know, that uh, 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 printing. And these are against the laws. First of all, we have a, a PFMA Act that says clearly that um, the government should not borrow from the Bank of Ghana uh, beyond 5% of the previous year's revenue. Now, clearly, the 35 billion that was given to government in 2022, for example, when you do the uh, calculation against the previous year's uh, uh, revenue, you are talking about about 55 percent, you know, lending to government. 55. When the law says that you should not do beyond 5 percent, and to think that we have gotten to this low, especially when we thought that we we're beginning to clean up our monetary policy and our financial uh, uh, management in 2016, which was an election year, where the government of the time then decided to do zero financing from the Bank of Ghana. You would have thought that, you know, the better managers of the economy, as they describe themselves, would have continued on that trajectory and ensured that, you know, uh, 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 they did not expose us to uh, the hazards of inflation and monetary policy slippages. But what do we have? About 50% plus financing from the Bank of Ghana. And we think that, I mean, it should just uh, be considered uh, as, you know, a central bank running uh, laws like other banks are. No, this, this is serious. And if the Bank of Ghana did not engage in some of the things that they engage in recklessly, look, our inflation would not have been hovering around you know, 40% as we speak. I mean, businesses would not have been collapsing because many of these businesses are collapsing as a result of their inability to keep up mm. with, you know, the change in prices and cost of their production. Again, anybody today who goes to the market, um, I mean, comes back with the screen A. A, I mean, it's, it's become very common. For you to meet people who come back from shopping, exclaim, hey, because the prices of, 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 of commodities 
have simply gone out of the roof. And it's as a result of this recklessness. I mean, I am not an economist, but the economists will tell you when the central bank pumps so much money that, you know, uh, uh, is akin to what the Bank of Ghana has done, the result is what we have. You know, inflation gets out of the roof. Your city becomes uh, unstable, especially when you have a, a, a high, you know, uh, 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 import uh, dependent economy. Clearly, this recklessness, I mean, this recklessness of the Bank of Ghana cannot, cannot just be swept under the carpet. And that is why, as a minority, even as we agree that the ultimate responsibility is not with the Bank of Ghana, we think that uh, their contribution to the state of affairs uh, uh, is quite significant. And there's a need for us to uh, begin to demand uh, a cleanup of, of the Bank of Ghana. As for the politicians, like the finance minister, the uh, uh, head of the economic management team, the vice president and the president, there's a way that the citizens can deal with them. There's a way. And that way, I'm sure, uh, will come to us soon when we queue uh, 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 to cast our ballots. But with people like the Bank of Ghana governor and their deputies, there's no way that we can vote on their competence or, their, or, or otherwise. The only way we can do so is to mass up like we are demanding, I mean, we are requesting people to join us, to demand better from them. And I am excited by the numbers that uh, are already reported uh, to, 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 to be gathering at the Obra spot. And I think that this must be a demonstration like no other. It is not about... Uh, uh, the NDC, even though it is organized by the uh, minority in parliament, led by the minority leader, Honorable Arthur Forsen, and the leadership of the minority. But it is about Ghana. It is about our economy. It's about the joblessness that uh, many of our youth uh, face. It's about the, 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 the systems that have been broken down in our health sector, in our education sector. I mean, for, can you imagine that today we are unable to pay uh, even WAIC to mark BEC scripts. Yet you have a Bank of Ghana that has given the government more than it should have against, you know, the, 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 the act setting it up and against other regulations of state. I mean, over 30 billion in one year. And yet you cannot even pay WAIC. You can't pay WAIC to mark BEC scripts of you know uh, 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 BEC students so that you can properly grade them and 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 send them to senior high school i mean that is how low we have sunk and uh, as for our health sector the less of the, the less talk about the less we, we talk about it the better so i uh, i want to go back to the grounds but i'll come back and ask you i'm happy you mentioned that there is a way uh for the other setups but for the bank of ghana you want to you have to be able to put this pressure. The issue about um, politicization, I'm struggling to um, dwell on that. But the independence of the Bank of Ghana to allow technocrats to operate with, with the macro data, micro data, and be able to support the economy. Of course, there are issues. Uh, is this the only way? I'll, I'll come back to that. But I see uh, my colleagues from Brassport having... Uh, some interviews there. Let's, let's, let's have a snapshot of what's happening there. We'll, we'll come back pretty shortly. Beverage for two million cities. Among at all is buying of curtains. What is your thought on this? You should ask yourself is whether those phones are owned by the individuals who receive them or they remain the property of the state. If the um, iPhones are the personal property of the recipients, then it would pass for an act of corruption. Right, they have used state money to buy phones for their personal use and benefit. That is an act of corruption. So, so we need to ask appropriate questions and find the answers. Are the phones their personal property, or they are meant for the transaction of official business solely? I doubt. And so, there is something wrong with with with, with that move. Auditor General did audits um, every uh, procurement they made, and then it came out without any uh, 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 
traces of corruption uh, once it's been audited and coming from GRS points to meaning it's okay. You see, we should be interested in the misuse of state funds. You are talking about mobile phones, all right? I've never heard this before. As I stand here, I have my own personal mobile phone. I bought it with my money. But if the need arises for me to use it and transact official business, why not? Why must it be the case that it is the state which has to buy iPhones for employees to use? Where do you draw the line? So the personal use of the phones is where I have a problem, all right? How do you determine that don't ask for these phones, you use them for official business alone? But like I said, it's difficult to draw that line, and so it is, it is, it is worrisome. That, that was the Member of Parliament for Bulsa North, and uh, let me pick a few questions from other protesters. You are welcome to Metro TV. Please, your name. My name is Honorable Alaji Gansa, Member of Parliament for Esikuma Odobin Brakwa. Thank you so much. Honorable, your expectations for today, for today, your, expe your expectations for today's demonstration. Yeah, what we are expecting is that uh, Ghanaians are now fed up with the, uh, the hardship that Ghanaians are going through. It's too much. So, uh, we should all match to the Bank of Ghana and we are expecting that the governor and his deputies will be booted out of the of, out of office because when this thing started it started with a printing of 22 billion they hid it in a remote corner of the budget they submitted honorable atu person he was not then not the minority spokesperson on finance he detected it and as that it should be the Bank of Ghana should stop printing of the money. They didn't listen to him. And today, they are coming to tell us that the Bank of Ghana is owing a hopping amount of 60.8 billion. What they, their defense is that the money they owe has been accumulated over the years. It is not just in this It is never true. It is never true. Because this is the first time we are hearing that the Bank of Ghana where the commercial banks have been going for assistance when the need arises is now owing. So if your central bank is owing, then where will the commercial banks go and then borrow? Can't they just print more money? You see? Can't they just print more money to cover up? They have to print more money. And printing more money means causing more inflation and causing more suffering. And that is what we are finding ourselves in. One would say that the, the Bank of Ghana boss, the uh, NS Addison, he should know better than that the decisions he is taking has repercussions for the Bank of Ghana should know better that printing the money will cause inflation. So if you are the governor, if you are a deputy governor, and you go ahead printing inflation, um, creating more inflation by printing new currencies, then Allah should forgive us and then save Ghana. Thank you very much. Well, we've heard from Honorable, and we'll still pick few thoughts from some protesters and let's see. What's the... So, um, that's, that's, that's uh, my colleague Vanessa there. Let me round up with you on, on the question I was asking. And people are coming in there yes. um, to the Obrasport. Yes, I was. So, you were talking about the issue of politicization. Mm -hmm. You know, it is important that we break the issues down mm. so that even though this is a political movement, people are able to see that the movement is not just about the everyday partisan politics. Mm. Look, you have a central bank that targeted to bring inflation down to 8% because they know the benefits that will have for the economy. Not so. And that the economy, when it is better and inflation is at 8%, will not accrue to the benefit, to, to not uh, the benefits will not accrue only to NDC members or CPP members. So that's not political. Right. But that same central bank 
targeting an inflation rate of 8% through its conduct, like printing about 45 billion Ghana cities for a government in one year, has created a situation where inflation went above 40%. 40%. And the effect of this 40% inflation is not only on NDC members. And so we must be concerned. Now, guess what? The Bank of Ghana governor, from a preferred target of 8%, now this year is telling us that their inflation target is 29%. Can you imagine? Their preferred target was 8%. Through their own recklessness, they took it beyond 40%. And now they are targeting 29%. If that is not a failure, that should provoke anybody to demand the resignation of the Bank of Ghana governor and the deputies. Not on partisan or political lenses. Then I wonder what else would provoke anybody to want better in this life. Look, the Bank of Ghana governor, per our laws, have the mandate mm. to caution the finance minister and the government, mm. even on borrowing, mm. because they have to submit a report that will assess our levels of exposure every time. He didn't do that. And so the finance minister went on a borrowing spree. And in the course of the period, borrowed close to 8 billion, in fact, more than 8 billion US dollars from the you know, capital market. It is the reason why our debt has increased from about 120 billion and note, 120 to about 600 billion in the course of this period. Six, seven years. I mean, how do you explain that? The Bank of Ghana governor checked his responsibility, didn't do the assessment, or even if he did, did not use it to caution the finance minister to stop him from the unbridled borrowing. And worse of all, Akwesi, when the capital market saw our exposure, and decided not to lend us money again. After we had borrowed over $8 billion, the Bank of Ghana, instead of, at that point, applying the bricks on the finance minister, became a sucker, became a comfortable spot, and started printing money for the government to continue, uh, you know, on, on its spending spree on very, very reckless, you know, projects. And that is why, for example, in one year, in 2022, they printed 45 billion, you know, uh, uh, Ghana cities for the government against its own regulations. I've already made reference to the PFMA Act mm. that doesn't allow the Bank of Ghana to finance government beyond 5%. Uh, 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 and yet, he did this in 2022, which is about 50% financing of the Bank of I mean, of the government of Ghana. In 2021, they did 35 billion. I mean, all put together, you are talking about 80 billion. And today, they tell us that as a result of this recklessness, as we see, they are running at a loss. And this is not a loss that affects only NDC or CPP members. So when we speak, we speak as Ghanaians. When we request people to join us, it is because we are concerned about how their management mm -hmm. has resulted in this suffering that we are all going through. And the insult of all is the fact that despite all of this, the Bank of Ghana thinks that the, their priority now is to construct, you know, an office complex. And just take your time again and, and follow the trajectory, the financial trajectory of this construction. First of all, the Bank of Ghana says that they want to construct this office complex at 100 million Ghana cities. I mean, 100 million dollars. So, mm. 100 million dollars. They write to the PPA. The PPA assesses the scope of work and decides that 100 million dollars is too much. And so, the PPA gives approval for about 80 million dollars. 80 million. Mm. So, the Bank of Ghana says, "This is what we are going to do. Give us approval. We think we'll spend 100 million." The PPA does this assessment and then suggests to them that they can use about 80 million to do the same project. Guess what happens? The Bank of Ghana defies that and eventually awards this contract at about $121 million. $121 million. And when we thought that was scandalous enough, we are hit in our face by a review 
of the contract to $222 million. I mean, how on earth do you go from $100 million? And we are not talking about cities. Where you will say as a result of their reckless exchange rates, the exchange rate, rate has no, we are talking about dollars. So you go from hundred million dollars, PPA says no, you can do it at eighty million dollars. You defy that and you award the contract at one hundred and twenty one million dollars. And today you tell us that the cost is actually two hundred and twenty two million dollars. I mean, and you think that if you say that this is reckless management of our hard end you know uh, resources, it is politicization. Okay. It cannot be. Okay. Okay, let me come to you, Kofi. Um, honorable things that um, it is not about the political pressure. It's about stating the facts and making sure that the Bank of Ghana stays on its toes and supports the economy um, monetary-wise. Uh, a very good morning to you. Mm. But let me quickly answer to that. Mm. If it was not political, they've already stated these claims, have they not? They've yeah. stated it, they've done press conferences, etc. So why a demonstration? The governor is not responding <coughs> in any way. So why not? Why a demonstration? There has to be pressure. No, why a demonstration? Why because they want to make it political. Because they've gone beyond educating the Ghanaians. They've gone beyond providing so-called facts. But they want to inch it up a step further and make it political. Because to them, it is another conduit to win power. But I'll come back to that. Right. Let me uh, send my sincerest condolence to His Excellency, the former uh, president, former president uh, John Ajikum Kufo, uh, for the unfortunate loss of his wife, mm -hmm. uh, Madame Teresa. Uh, quite unfortunate. So, on behalf of government, the president issued a statement, and then the Minister of Information also. Uh, issued a statement that uh, all flags be flied at uh, half mast. So, uh, sincerest condolences to the family, and then also to the family of the Honorable E.T. Mensa, uh, who also passed away, I believe, uh, on Sunday or so. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Same day, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so, mm -hmm. my sincerest uh, condolences mm -hmm. to the family as well, irrespective of our differences politically. I think he was a stalwart. He was a giant in our political. Uh, uh, space. He contributed in so diverse much, yes. ways, both in uh, making laws and then also as a sports minister at the time. Was it just a sports minister? I think youth he and youth and sports. Was that that was the only portfolio? No, okay. Yeah, that was a mm -hmm. yeah. But before that, he was also mayor of of Accra. Of, of Accra. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Eighty two mm -hmm. to about ninety one. Or so. Yes. So irrespective of our of our differences, this is a, a gentleman who contributed immensely to our nation state our development and to our politics so uh, we extend our sincerest condolences again from the government to the family uh, we wish them all the best uh, certainly the government will be there to support uh, once the appropriate uh, mechanisms are put in place uh, my brother uh, I also yesterday i went to abomosu have you been to abomosu before <laughs> no where are you from i am from Quabril. oh Mm -hmm. You're from Cabri mm -hmm. East, or which Cabri East? So I'm I'm from the same place. With yes, you. I know. Oh, you know that. I know very but how well. How come you've never told me this? <laughs> My father is also from Cabri uh, East. Oh wow, small world. Yes. Anyway, so I went to Abumosu, mm. and Abumosu is where is one of the places where we are building the nine STEM schools, and I wanted to go and see because they were doing a, a STEM road show. So Minister of Education and Minister of uh, Information mm. did a roadshow discussion on jobs related to STEM. So they brought a lady called Shikanek. She was one of the ladies who attended the, uh, who participated in the road trip to London. Mm. She's also a mechanic. Mm. So she came and gave several examples of jobs and career path mm. and, in the STEM space. And I was marveled. I mean, Suhini, politics aside, I don't know if you've seen the school. It's literally like a university. Uh, it's a high school, secondary school, but it's built like a, a university. And there are nine of them across the country. So we'll be visiting all, all of them. And I think this is something that we definitely have to push uh, when it comes to STEM education. And then lastly, about uh, two weeks or three weeks ago, there was a contentious debate about cocoa prices. Mm where our brothers on the NDC made a categorical statement 
that the president and the government has shortchanged uh, our cocoa farmers and that Cote d'Ivoire is going to announce their price. And when Cote d'Ivoire announces their price, it's going to be more than Ghana's price to prove that indeed we have shortchanged uh, 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 Ghanaians. It turns out a Bloomberg story came out and Cote d'Ivoire has announced the price and it, is it came down to in our CD equivalent 1,152 versus hours of 1,308. Clearly indicating that the NDC led by Eric Opoku and uh, the minority leader peddled falsehood to the Ghanaian people, especially cocoa farmers. So let it be stated clearly and categorically that when it comes to cocoa prices, Ghana is leading. Ghana is leading by almost 160 cities more than our brothers in Cote d'Ivoire. Now let's come to the issue. So, so GM has just notified me that Honorable E.T. Menzel's last uh, portfolio <coughs> was the Minister works for Works and Housing. Works and Housing. Minister okay. for Works sure. and Housing. So apart from sports, he did Works and works Housing. And, housing. Yeah. and then also a member of the Council of States. Sure, sure. Yeah. Which was a position he was holding, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So definitely a, a, a giant in our politics mm -hmm. and someone that we have to go back and learn from. Right. Um, you know, I meant to end with that, but since oh, so we are... Oh, so, please go ahead. Yeah. 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 Um, was such a colossus. Yeah. And when he passed, uh, what came to mind was my days uh, at Radio Gold mm -hmm. in 2007, thereabout, when the NDC was uh, struggling to come to power. Um, he used to host um, us to, you know, parties every now and then just to encourage the staff. And one thing I loved about those moments were the opportunity to go through his library. Mm. I mean, he has a huge collection of, of books. He was a lover of the arts. And wow. I, I, I am not surprised that uh, it impacted his political life the way it did because he was a very knowledgeable person mm. and it is not just a family that has lost uh, you know a pillar the mm. NDC despite you know the very frost relationship in some quarters uh, in, in in his last days uh, will miss his 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 wisdom I mean uh, he, 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 he his 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 contribution to the growth of the NDC cannot be underestimated. I mean, he was the longest ever serving youth uh, minister, youth organizer, a youth of, organizer of the, of, the of the NDC. Of the I mean, for a very long time, he was youth organizer until uh, Honorable Harunai Drusu took over uh, from him. And so, uh, we will dearly miss him. Um, may his soul rest uh, in 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 peace. And we also uh, extend our sincere condolences to his family. And, and and his constituents as mm. well, the, mm. the members, the, the constituents of uh, uh, Ningo Pram Pram, mm. where he served as member of parliament for the mm. longest mm. period. And um, I'm sure the party will give him the befitting uh, send off when the time comes and the family uh, makes known uh, mm. the, the, the program. I, mm. I wish to also extend my sincere uh, condolences to the former president, uh, His Excellency John Ajakumko for for his loss. Um, we know that our mother, Mother Teresa, has been uh, unwell for uh, quite some time now. And we pray that uh, she is in the bosom of her Lord. And may the good Lord grant the former president the serenity of mind and then the clarity of thought mm -hmm. to endure this loss. Uh, it's a big loss to him, I know, uh, and the family. Because if you listen to members of the family, they speak highly of how she was able to put everybody together and was like the center of the family. And it's a big loss to them. My sincerest condolences to them as well. Right, right. So let me come back to you now, uh, Kofi. Yeah. I'll speak about um, Honorable uh, when we are rounding up. Yeah. I, I remember I when I used to follow him a lot um, when he was a sports minister. I, when I was in school by then. And then, of course, how Sam George was able to displace him because yeah. I never thought yeah. I was reporting by then, and I never thought that that, that could happen. That was possible. Yeah. And yeah. that made honorable my friend immediately. Yeah. How he was able to mobilize himself to 
to be such seen. a steward. Yeah, I mean, he's immense. Mm -hmm. And and uh, like I said, he 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 practically mentored Sam George. I mean, mm -hmm. that's, exactly, that's, exactly. That shows exactly. his love for yeah. you yeah. know uh, 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 young people. Mm -hmm. I I tell you, there was hardly a conversation you have with him that will not end with a book that he has read and re recommending one to you to also read. Mm. Uh, an amazing soul. Yeah. Okay. So, Kofi, let me, yeah, let me on, allow you. On a lighter note, mm -hmm. my sister, uh, Akosia uh, Menokosi, mm -hmm. is watching. And she drew my attention that I used the wrong word. It's supposed to be flown at half mast. Okay. I think when I was yeah. saying right. it, I said it wrong. <laughs> and so, Akosia, thank you very much. She, she's an English teacher. Uh, so, <laughs> Akosia, thank you very much. Um, now, coming back to the issue at hand, mm. I think it's important that we take Ghanaians through where we are coming from and where we are. It is indeed true that um, we have a financing policy that says that government in times of need, we call it temporary advances, can go to the Bank of Ghana for assistance. Um, before the MPP came into power, it was 10% of previous year revenue. And then it was amended, I think late uh, 2016, to 5%. And when we came into power, let the record show that 2017, 2018, 2019, and 2021, we didn't take any financial support from Bank of Ghana. We call it zero financing. We didn't take anything. I think maybe it was a slip when Suhini said we took... Uh, some billions in 2021. No, we didn't. 2021 was zero financing. 2019 was zero was financing. Nice I'll show you. Okay, so if you want to go into the details, I can. For example, 2010, we took 10 billion of uh, what we call non marketable bonds or asset management. Mm. And that, 20, that was 2020. 2021, we didn't take anything. Uh, 2019, we didn't take anything. 2018, we didn't take anything. 2017, we didn't take anything. So really, what we are focusing on then is 2020 and 2022. Mm -hmm. These were years of, you know, as you know, peculiar circumstances, especially in 2022. What happened in 2022? If you recall, we had a budget uh, 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 expenditure a target of 133 billion Ghana CDs and a revenue target of 100 billion. And we did a revise to about 99.5 billion. So, ab initio, we had a deficit of about 33 billion Ghana CDs. And then, if you recall, we wanted to do the e levy and other revenue measures which didn't go through mm. because the opposition wouldn't allow us to do that. So the government also, and then because of the challenges we faced, the government couldn't also go to the international market, the money market, to go and raise, typically what we go and raise to support our budget. So we were in a hole of 33 billion. And the law allows government to go to the central bank for liquidity support. So we went to the central bank for liquidity support in the form of non-marketable bonds, etc. You know, so it was a peculiar year where the government needed the support, and the law allows it. That in instances where government finds itself in serious challenges, the government can go to Bank of Ghana and seek for support. We did. Now, there are instances where my brothers have raised concerns that we never informed Parliament about it. Um, I have a, a statement here from 2010, uh, 2020. Let me uh, read it to you. This is a statement in 2020, and then I'll read to you 2023. Uh, give me one second. I'm trying to find the uh, 2021. But it was May 2020 when mm. Minister of uh, uh, Finance went to Parliament and informed Parliament that the government, because of the challenges we find ourselves in, needed to go to the Bank of Ghana for some support. That was in 2020. And then also in 2023, here, February 16th, 2023, if you read uh, the, the call, it's called the Ghana's Domestic Debt Exchange Program, when the minister went to parliament to inform them. When you read uh, item 52, it talks about 
government also going to Bank of Ghana to seek support. So we've had the privilege of informing the parliament in 2020 and then also in 2023 about all the support that we sought from uh, BOG. Now, my brother talked about instances of inflation. Mm. Look, our inflation, inflation issues happened, if you recall, somewhere in October last year. Do you remember, I think first or second week of October last year, we had a sharp depreciation of the city. Mm. It was from about 10 or so to 15 cities within four or five days. And then if you recall, prices of goods and services started going up. So I, I find it a bit uh, interesting when Suhini says that inflation started going up because Bank of Ghana started printing money. That phenomenon is true. That when bank, a, a, bank, a central bank prints money into a system, it can lead to inflation. But our inflation issue was not necessarily caused by the support that Bank of Ghana gave to, be, be, uh, to the government. Because if that is the case, then we should have seen the inflation issue as far back as 2020. Because I just told you that we first got our support, mm. our first financing was in 2020 of 10 billion in asset management or non-marketable bonds. So how come in 2020 we didn't see the inflation issues that they are referencing? How come? So you, you have to really look at the issues well, analyze the issues well, because we all recall what happened even in 2022, all the way to the second end of the second quarter. We didn't see that inflationary issues. It was really in the third quarter when we, show, we saw that sharp depreciation that people, the market started reacting. I'm sure you recall where even uh, 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 oil that mm. we used to make food mm. shot up from 400 yes, cities yes, to 1,000 cities. Everything just started going up. It actually went up to 1,200. Yes. Everything started going up. And it became a topical issue because of the sharp depreciation of the city. We can go into what caused the sharp depreciation of the city has to do with issues relating to expenditure on, on our petrol uh, uh, imports, etc. But to make the impression that Bank of Ghana printed money and then they just pushed all of that money into the market and caused inflation, that's absolutely not true. The facts don't support it. So, But, but do you agree that there are many factors of... Um Inflation. Of the course, factors of course. And I even inflation. alluded, and, I even uh, yes. alluded to it. Mm -hmm. That what and this could be one of the what one he of the is causes saying of is one of the reasons of, of us hitting over forty percent. No, of. I'm saying that what he said mm -hmm. is one of the reasons. Mm -hmm. In the theory, when you read it, mm -hmm. it's one of the reasons when central bank prints money, too much money, it causes inflation mm -hmm. because there's too much money chasing fewer goods, no issues. I am saying that in our instance. Mm -hmm. It wasn't the case. Okay. And I've given you evidence when the inflationary issues occurred, mm. which was in third quarter 2022. And we all saw it. And I even recall market women coming out and saying that because of the depreciation of the CD, uh, uh, they call it forward transaction. Mm. The goods and services they have to now import, so they have to increase it so that when they are ready to go and import new items, they will have enough money to import it. That became the issue. It was never because Bank of Ghana printed money. You get, you get my point. So mm -hmm. let's, let's treat every issue differently. Let's not apply textbook theories to every issue as though every issue is the same. It isn't. Our issue wasn't the case. Now, coming back to the issue of politics. Clearly, as I've alluded to in my earlier submission, everything the NDC is doing is political. I mean, they have an agenda to win power. So they will, they will latch on every opportunity to create further uh, 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 dissatisfaction in the system. Because I, I, otherwise, you've, you've done several engagements. You've written, you've written several statements and put them out there. You've done press conferences. You've had even, uh, I think, roundtable discussions. So many things. You've met with CSOs, etc to put across your views. So to go a step further and demonstrate, which is your right, you have every right to do that, is to show that you want to exert more pressure, political pressure, 
so that you can create this contentment in the minds of Ghanaians that you know what, we are the right people, give us power so we can come back to power. But what is more important is that, my brother, when we have an opposition, what Ghanaians expect from the opposition is solutions. I am yet to hear a single solution from the NDC in all of these things. If you've heard some, you can share it with us. I'm yet to hear a single solution. So I think that we need to go beyond what we haven't done well and move to what are we going to do differently. Because Ghanaians live in Ghana and they want to hear the solutions. If you are referencing the asset impairments uh, relating to the $60 billion uh, lo dollar loss and uh, CD losses that we've made, Tell Ghanaians how you are going to take us out of that economic uh, quagmire. If you are referencing to uh, uh, any other issue, tell us what the alternative is. It shouldn't be just a matter of demonstrating, a matter of just exerting political pressure, hiding behind advocacy groups to create more pressure. No. We have moved beyond that. What we need is the solution to solve our problems. But what I can say and assure Ghanaians, is that things are being done. Look, at least for the city, we've seen some degree of stabilization. Petrol came down, is now inching up because of the global prices again. We are, we are hoping that things will level up and petrol will start seeing a downward uh, uh, trend. So, yes, things are not in the position that we want to see them, but we've seen some degree of reduction in, in some of the the, the economic indicators, which is important. We are doing even more to, to, to make sure that we bring more relief to Ghanaians. So we can discuss, and I think journalists should challenge us to discuss the solutions. We are ready to discuss the solutions. So let me, let me yeah. ask you, uh, I mean, for, for what you're saying, uh, let me ask you this and round up with it. What are you expecting? You're expecting the NDC to be giving you solutions no or not giving alternatives. us no, yeah. not giving Ghanians, Ghanians. yeah oh, you want them to stop pushing the pressure as an opposition party you are in government mm -hmm. so whether they have the solutions or not they should put you to your feet and make sure you're working yeah so in as much as apart from the fact that um, i asked him about the independence of the um of of the bank of ghana if the economy is not in the position Ghanaians expect it to be. Mm -hmm. You want the NDC to sit down? No, I don't want the NDC to sit down. You don't down. want the NDC to no, talk? No, no, no. I, no, I want the NDC to talk. You don't want the NDC to put pressure on you because you want them to come with solutions? or No, 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 no. The NDC, as an opposition party, mm. has every right mm. to exert pressure on the government. Mm -hmm. It's absolutely fine. Mm -hmm. And they've done that. I've told you countless activities. But they are done. not seeing the results they think no, but, but should economic get. Results, and so they should go on with the pressure. No, uh, the that's economic, what they're doing. Economic results... Adding the demonstration to it. You don't want that. No, 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 no. no. I'm, I, I, don't, I, I don't begrudge them. If they want to demonstrate, that's mm -hmm. their right. Mm -hmm. What I'm saying is that Ghanaians are looking at two political parties. One that finds itself in challenges. Mm -hmm. Another that's in the opposition that wants to come to power. So I'm saying that in addition to exerting pressure on the government, it behooves on the opposition to also proffer solutions. Mm. That when we get the opportunity, these are the things that we are going to do. Look, my brother, when you go to Nigeria, it's an example that challenges are not enough for a people to say that we are going to vote a, a party out. Mm. Because irrespective of the challenges, the, the, the incumbent kept power. Is that not so? So that could be several reasons. But the point is that challenges may not be enough. Ghanaians may still decide that, you know, irrespective of the challenges, we want the MPP to continue. Unless the opposition proves to us that when we give them the opportunity again, and I use the word again because they've had the opportunity several times. When we give them the opportunity again, they are going to offer superior solutions that will work. So it shouldn't be a case of we are exerting pressure. Yes, it should be one of them, but it should go beyond that. And that's what I'm saying. 
They can do all they want to do. They can do as many demonstrations that they want to do. They can write as many theses and as many reports. They can hold several press conferences, no issues. But in all of that, what is the alternative? How are you going to solve the problem if we give you the opportunity? That is the discussion for me, for Ghanaians, we want to hear. We as a government, we are doing everything necessary to make sure that we bring relief to Ghanaians. As I speak to you now, IMF is coming back mm. to have further discussions for the second tranche to come in, in November, to give us the, the breathing space that we need. Mm. Uh, the finance minister is still in engagement with our external directors to see how we can get more relief in that space. These are all measures we are putting in place. You know about the, the discretionary cuts we've made, etc., to ensure that we bring relief to Ghanaians. So we are doing what we have to do, and we'll continue to come up with solutions that will help. For example, gold for oil. It came as a stopgap measure to stop the, 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 the further depreciation of the city. We continue to think outside of the box to help ameliorate the issue. What we want to see from the opposition is the alternative. And I think that is fine. But to wrap up, Suhini created the impression as though war-torn countries are far better than us. Suhini, let me put it to you. Irrespective of our challenges, Ghana stands tall and Ghana stands superior. My brother, you are a journalist. You know the number of Burkina Bays who want to enter Ghana. Mm -hmm. Is that not so? Mm -hmm. People who are leaving Niger to come and, and stay in Ghana. Because irrespective of our challenges, the peace we enjoy, the stability we enjoy, offer people the opportunity to at least build something. There are people still coming from Nigeria to come and school here. Life is going on, irrespective of the challenges. We admit it. But to create the impression that Niger is better than Ghana, that Burkina is better than Ghana, please. I, 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 don't, I beg to differ, sincerely. I don't think that is the case. And then he talks about death stock. Question is, what did you come to meet? You came to meet what? Nine billion cities. And you took it to 121 billion. Let's calculate the, the, the rate of change. But how much did you add to it, percentage-wise? How much have we added, percentage-wise? You can look at it. But let the record show that you came to meet 9 billion cities. And you ballooned it to 121 billion. All right. So uh, I, I need to go on a quick break and come back to you. I'll come, I'll come back to you. I just want to take a very quick one and come back. But um, uh, Alaji Haruna from Asaiman says, I can see go out with Suhini and join the demonstration for the salvage of Ghanaians. What Ghanaians are going through NPP. Uh, the NPP is afraid of protest today. Hey, uh, Alaji Haruna uh, says that one. Okay, so um, the ET Mensa one has, has been notified. Kofi Sika says NPP called for the head of former governor of the Bank of Ghana, Dr. Henry Kofi Wampa, for what they termed at that time as rising inflation, galloping depreciation uh, of the city and rapid decline of the currency. At that, at that time, I don't think the Bank of Ghana had even reported the whooping losses we are witnessing today. Neither did they record negative equities. It, it is therefore so baffling and hypocritical that members of the MPP will be worried today if the Bank of Ghana boss is asked to resign for plunging Bank of Ghana into this monumental and historic mess, Addison must go. Simply sit Um Tonto is a good communicator. It is rather unfortunate to always hear the most underperforming minority leader who was a board member of the Bank of Ghana during which construction of the Central Bank new office started. Tell my brother from the NDC, the Bank of Ghana was awarded the best central bank in the world in 2020. The MPP worst performance is always the NDC best performance. The NDC, uh, the MPP should do well to bring Dr. Baumia to retire the Bali former president Mahama. Maxwell Chalim Balim from Talency sent in that one. Good morning, Akwasi. What is Kofi Tonto saying? Why will NDC stop when the protagonist in the person of Governor Addison is still at post? It's obvious the only language the leadership 
of this country is conversant with is uh, demonstration. So we are hitting the streets to sing the song they love to dance on and act. Occupy Bank of Ghana, the move from Lexus, Bowen, Kemi, inside a showman estate. So you keep your text messages coming in. We'll try and read them. But for now, I'll take a quick break. When I come back, I'll have the second round and then we'll do um, something on the NPP. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Mr. Ampedu. Good afternoon, Mr. Sal. How is business doing? My business is collapsing. Why is your business collapsing? I sold my products and services to my clients on credit, and my debtors are not paying their debt. Have you heard of Rosic Consult Limited, a debt recovery company operating in all the 16 regions of Ghana? Not at all. Mr. Ampedu, all you need to do is to contact them on their customer service line. They do all that. Ah. I recommend Rossi Consult Limited, a debt recovery company to financial institutions, businessmen and businesswomen, other companies, and also individuals. Rossi Consult has 98.4% debt recovery rate. We have professional debt recovery managers. You are assured of swift debt recovery. No recovery, no commission. For Rossi Consult Limited, no more write-offs. And we pre-finance the recovery ourselves. Step into success with Accra Business School. Boost your career with a prestigious MSc degrees from KNUSD. Pick from Human Resource Management, Communication and International Relations, Public Affairs. In just 12 months, our MBA can be yours. Dive into our BSc programs in IT Security and Cybercrime, IT Management and Business and Management, endorsed by top universities in Ireland and Wales. We offer flexible entry, payment and learning options. It's time to unlock your potential and take flight. Visit www.abs.edu.gh or dial 0263-888-555. Let Accra Business School elevate your future today. Enjoy the fruits of your labor, they say. But as humans, aging and physical infirmity stands our way of enjoying our mansions and homes. It often becomes challenging, if not impossible, to use our stairways day in, day out. With portable American pneumatic vacuum elevators, PVEs, you are assured of unlimited enjoyment of your mansions and homes. It's a self-supported elevator for vertical movement of humans and goods at homes and offices. The original comes in three custom-made models with wheelchair accessibility call it luxury but it's a necessary imperative for vertical mobility do not let aging or infirmity limit you get one for your easy vertical mobility at home it's affordable and can be installed in just three days without modification to your existing building it's however easier to incorporate it at the construction stage we also have traditional fuji elevators and escalators for your high-rise buildings and malls visit lifts and elevators company limited at sakumono for your your elevators nationwide for free consultation to call or whatsapp us on 0200-535-515 lifts and elevators the elevator people
C'est ça au bol à star, non? Na Zoom Lion Romain. Je Zoom Lion Bola Konko Nubi. Fa star 857 hash. Tu as bola ka. Na me yem fa au bola. Zoom Lion. Tia, me yem fa au bola. What it? My name is John, and this is my long time crush. My cookie dipped in strawberry yogurt. On this scorching hot afternoon, on our way back from a long job hunt, we met this good Samaritan who offered us a six weeks later. We are special wedding reception for our bride and groom. And there she is, my cookie, dipped in someone else's yogurt. Who holds the mula? Holds the shot. Play game that games, the easiest lottery to play, and we beat four numbers from zero to nine up to three times daily to become one of our daily lucky winners. Dial star 946 hash to play now. Or you can also play online at www.gameparkgames.com. Game Park is regulated by the National Lottery Authority. In life, choice is good. But Choice Plus Safety is way better. Your safety and comfort is paramount. Under the cylinder recirculation model, you can buy LPG in a safe environment. All cylinders are inspected and maintained to the best safety standards, so your safety is assured. Just take your empty cylinder to the nearest exchange point and swap it for a filled cylinder. Different cylinder sizes will be available to meet your pocket size. Imagine cooking in a smoke-free environment. This will improve the health and well-being of you and your family. Choose LPG in a safer model of distribution. Cylinder recirculation model. Securing your safety, creating more jobs. A message from the National Petroleum Authority under the patronage of the Ministry of Energy. And no so any of you will be set up as auto credit. Set up as auto credit and you are So what problem be up as a issue for Arthur? He lands up a power up so and no one on the two as him be up a copy. So only this much for now and money how and it's only day chance what and it's a new baby and one said who may young phone. Oh, sorry, who may know phone. No one direct star two two six ash. You are through there. You see the power up now. Mobile money, Visa card, Master card, a BH Mutia. Eh, you let me send me any. You see the power up. What want to show a dowsem? Nay, simple. Ah. You welcome back from the break. This is still Good Morning Ghana. We are live uh, from our studios here at Ridge in Accra. A happy birthday to you, Ben of AH Cafe here at uh, Metro TV. Ben, happy birthday to you. I'll do this properly when I'm rounding up. Um, Accra Business School, ABS, says, Why don't you secure your future with Accra Business School? Boost your career with uh, prestigious MSc degrees from KNUST. Pick from HRM, Communications and International Marketing, International Relations, Public Affairs, or IT Management. In just 12 months, our MBA can be yours. Dive into our BSc programs in IT security and cybercrime. IT management and business management endorsed by top universities in Ireland and Wales. We offer flexible entry payments and learning options convenient for you. It's time to unlock your potential and take position. Visit www.abs.edu.gh or call us on 0263-888-555 or 0263-888-666. Visit our campus at Spinktest Road, Christ Square. Let Accra Business School elevate 
your future today. Now, brushing your kids' teeth sometimes becomes difficult due to resistance because of the taste of the toothpaste available to them. Use Kel Kids Toothpaste flavored with strawberry and gives a perfect taste of, uh, for kids and makes them develop a personal attitude and love of brushing their teeth always. Kel Kids Toothpaste protects child's gum, prevents cavity, and makes the teeth strong and healthy with freshness all day. Kel Kids Toothpaste is recommended for children between two and six years old. A product from Samara Company Limited produces Osasu and is approved by the Food and Drugs Authority, FDA. Kelkits, happy smile. Now, enjoying the fruits of your labor um, is as important as enjoying your, the mansions of your labor. The pains of climbing stairs when not exercising could be challenging for all ages, but worry no more. Lifts and elevators have got you covered with the best portable American pneumatic vacuum elevators on the market today. It is a simple self-supported elevator for both homes and offices. And guess what? It can lift your goods too. Uh, wheelchairs can fit in and they come in three custom-made models. It is affordable and can be installed within, within three days. Visit lifts and elevators at Sakumoro or just call on 0200535515 or send a mail to elevatorsg or elevatorsgh at gmail.com for consultations and the best solutions in easy vertical movements. Game Park. What does wealth mean to you? Do you want to live like a tycoon? Remember who's got the moolah, got the power. Ghana's newest lottery game draws live on Adum TV at 9 a.m., 12 p.m., and 6 p.m. daily. Now, pick your phones, tablets, and computers and download the Game Park Games app on Play Store. You can also play on our website at www.gamepark.com games.com or by dialing star 946 hash on all networks. Just choose your numbers from 0 to 9. It's easy to play and easy to win. Charlie, make we play this game and make some mula. That's cash. Nobody beats our odds in Ghana. Game Park Games, more mula, more power. This game is regulated by the National Lottery Authority not for persons under 18. And we are saying play responsibly. Now, hold on. Keep calm and love the number 10. It's been 10 years of grace-filled magic, 10 years of transpo transforming spaces into havens of beauty and functionality. 10 years of grace-filled ventures bringing you tens of thousands of dreams into reality. Walk into the showroom of grace-filled ventures and experience the best in swivel chairs and embrace your every turn. A conference table that is the epicenter of your team's creativity, your sleek cabinets and the best workstations. And yes, a sofa that calms your body's tens of drudgeries. Visit Gracefield Ventures Showroom at number 2, John Nee O Street, Kisaman, Accra. It's directly opposite Kisaman Park. A call... 0501-672-776 or 0501-672-777. And now uh, we say let's, uh, uh, the Makers Electronics Company. is the Makers Electronics Blessing Attack Promo, rush to the Makers Electronics Company Limited for up to 67%. Uh, discount on selected appliances such as Samsung, LG, Moved, Nasco, TCL, Media, and Toshiba. Quality but affordable with two years manufacturer defect warranty. Visit our showrooms, Taifa Burkina Highway, Amasaman Zungu Junction, Oyarifa, Oyarifa Taiman Boga Junction, Kaswa New Market, Ashaiman Valku Flat, Kumasi Ahinema Kokobin, Takradi, Ifiokuma Number 9 Market, 
Call us on 055-222-2253 or 055-222-2254. The Makers Electronics Company Limited, large and in charge with quality but affordable home appliances and consumer electronics. Terms and conditions apply. Um, let me see. I should have one more to add. Uh, from here, and then we can come back to the studio for our discussion. This one is from MTN. MTN says, ready to treat your callers to good tunes while you win incredible rewards? That's a question we are asking you. End points by purchasing, renewing, copying, or gifting your favorite caller tunes, and you can win amazing prizes based on your total accumulated points. Yep. Build as many points as possible and you can win tons of data to stay connected to the things you love. Or you can win an amazing 10,000 uh, Ghana City cash prize to splash on your favorite things. It's a perfect way to entertain your caller to, or your callers with music and get rewarded at the same time. Start collecting your caller tunes points today. Visit colortunes.mtn.com.gh. Spell colortunes or just dial star 1355 hash to get started on the MTN Colortunes service. Promo lasts till the 7th day of November 2023 and the terms and conditions apply. Thank you very much for staying with us. Let me come back uh, swiftly to the studio and I'll, I'll come to you, Honorable. Thank you for allowing me the time. It's all right. Mm. Um, See, I think that uh, some of our friends in the MPP mm -hmm. uh, selectively listen. Um, when we started the show, um, Kofi referred to me as a warmonger because of the dress I was wearing. Oh, that was on a lighter note. Man. I know. I'm, make, I'm building a point. Oh, I'm well, how do you build a point if it sounds on a lighter note? You did. On That's a lighter on a lighter note. note. I see. I do. Oh, but I'm, coming. I'm responding to something you said when you were wrapping up. Okay. You know, he referred to me as a warmonger, and he said that uh, because of my dress. And then he said that oh, uh, we were warmongering, you know. Uh, then on set, he uh, used a lighter phrase to say that uh, we are politicking because we have made all the issues. So the demonstration is just about politics. So in response to his lighter note statement about us being a warm Also on the lighter note. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, let me finish. You're right. not getting it. I think you are not getting what no, I'm you saying. Let me, let me, I'm, let me. I'm recalling what happened. Right. You see, right. in response to his lighter note mm -hmm. comment, you know, that we are warmongers and all of that, I said, you recall, that I am surprised he is worried. I am surprised he is worried about war mongering and war in Ghana and not worried about the state that we find ourselves where some war torn countries are even doing better than us. That's what I said. I did not say Niger is better than Ghana. I didn't say Burkina Faso is better than Ghana. But you heard him in his conclusion suggesting that that's what I said. Yeah, I agree. I mean, so that's why I say they suffer selective listening or hearing. You refer to us as a monger. In a lighter note, I also re responded by saying that I'm surprised you are worried about war when war torn countries economically seem to be doing better than us, and you are not worried about that either. I didn't say they were generally better than us. No. And so, but that's what he had. And so he, he concludes by saying that, oh, Ghana is better than Burkina Faso. He <laughs> said his own question. And he's answering it so very lightly. But that's, that's on the side. Hmm. Now he also, um, without any uh, proof, challenges that uh, the Bank of Ghana did not finance uh, the government in 2021. In fact, the Bank of Ghana's own annual report and financial statement, you know, made that revelation. And in their subsequent press releases, they sought to explain that this was not new money printed. But it's still financing. <laughs> you understand? Mm. And that is what contributed to the inflation getting to about 54%. I mean, before this, you know, reckless financing of government began, our inflation was a bit reasonable. But immediately it began, 
then we had this getting out of hand. Mm. And so it becomes very difficult for you to agree with the economic theory that when you do A, your result will be B. But in this particular case, the evidence shows that your results, the results you are getting as B started when you started doing A, but you don't want to, to link it to it. It just, it just, it just beats my, my, my imagination why you will do that kind of analysis. But you notice that he carefully avoided commenting on the, like the National Cathedral, the curious changing, you know, um, um, prices for the uh, construction of the office complex of the Bank of Ghana. He smartly avoids any comments on it because it's indefensible. It's, it's shameful for a, 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 you know, bank that is running at a loss to be engaged in such dodgy, you know, construction. So I'm not surprised that he, he, he avoids uh, commenting uh, on that. But what is significant is his worry that the minority has gone ahead to organize this demonstration after all the press conferences and the talk on the recklessness of the Bank of Ghana and, by extension, the government. I mean, why not a demonstration? I mean, the current president, one of his claims to fame is how he led demonstrations in this country and championed right courses. I mean, in the run-up to the 2016 elections, it was a big deal. So why has it all become, you know, unacceptable, as it is suggested by Kofi, for a minority group no, to go it. beyond the press conferences to organize a, to organize a demonstration? I said it's okay. It, 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 so, so, so I, don't, I, don't, I don't understand. And then he says that we are not preferring solutions. Seriously. I mean, again, you wonder what kind of appreciation uh, 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 is brought to this discussion. Look, this same minority cautioned about borrowing, didn't we? And if we tell you you are borrowing too much, stop the borrowing. Is that not a solution? When you didn't listen to that solution, where did you take us? Where we now have to do debt exchange program, a first one is not enough. We are considering a second one. I mean, what is a solution beyond telling you that what you are doing is bad? Stop it. That's a solution. To say that the Bank of Ghana governor must go because of the recklessness that he and his team have engaged in is solution number one. I mean, if you have a bad driver in charge of a vehicle and you get the driver down, are you not preventing accidents from happening? Are you not preventing a crash by just that singular act? So what solutions are they talking about? The sol the, to, to stop the bleeding itself is a solution, especially because when that advice is coming from experience, the experience that led to a situation where the Bank of Ghana was doing zero financing. We are those telling you that when we were in charge of the Bank of Ghana, we managed it to a point where it was financing government. It was no longer financing government. And so, that is a solution we are giving you. We are telling you that we were able to manage the Bank of Ghana to post profits to the tune of 1.5 billion a year, even though the Bank of Ghana is not set up to, you know, make profit. And so, even if it is not making profit, it's okay. But it's not also set up to make losses. And so, if it is making losses, it's not okay. And so, we are telling you that... We were able to manage it to a point where it was making profit. And that profit has been used to construct the Bank of Ghana Hospital. And you say we don't have solutions. I mean, our solution is there. The evidence of our solution is there in the Bank of Ghana Hospital that you see. If it comes to managing the Bank of Ghana effectively. Our solution is in your attempt to, you know, construct an office complex in a manner that is dodgy now because you claim that you started this construction when you started posting profit. Now all of a sudden you want us to believe that profit doesn't matter. Hey. Hmm. I mean, I, I, I don't get it. And then you say it, we don't have solutions. <clears throat> the solution number one is that 
you fire incompetent people at post. Fire incompetent people at post. Let them step aside. That's solution number one. Just like the suggested solution to go to IMF, which you refused to go to, at the time that you were supposed to go to and eventually went in a wheelchair. So you continue to, 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 to dismiss you know, some of these things at your own peril. Unfortunately, the effect doesn't just hit only you. And that's why we are worried. That's why we are worried. And that's why we cannot afford to do nothing. We will continue speaking. We will continue demonstrating if need be. And if that is a way to get you to listen, then so be it. As for the NDC taking the political advantage, we are not shy at all about it. <laughs> I mean, President Akufuado used demonstration as his trump card when he was seeking to govern. So, the NDC was not set up to just oppose. The NDC was set up to win political party and govern better. And so if exposing your recklessness, your corruption, your incompetence, is what it will take for the people to see the superior management qualities of the NDC, which is there in the topic that we are discussing, by the way the, the Bank of Ghana was managed then and now, then so be it. We are not shy at all about the fact that this will lead to political fortunes for the NDC. That is why the NDC was set up for. That is what the NPP was set up for. That is why the NPP engaged in, in similar acts. But you need to look at the issues. And that is why I said in the beginning that despite the fact that this is a political vehicle, this is organized by the minority in parliament, are the issues of national character, do they affect everybody or not? Does inflation, the cost of inflation, does it affect only NDC members? The benefits we get from the profits of the Bank of Ghana in the construction of the bank hospital, is it only NDC members who go there for it? And so when the Bank of Ghana is mismanaged to a point where it is running losses to a tune of over 60 billion, <clears throat> Shouldn't every Ghanaian be concerned even if the NDC is leading the charge? Right. Uh, my, uh, my brother. Kobe. Yes. You know, Suhini tried to talk about solutions. Mm -hmm. Citing past glories. Forgetting that uh, the same glories, Ghanaians passed a verdict on it and said they weren't enough mm -hmm. in 2016 mm. and on the basis of which they booted you out. Mm. So you are here citing Bank of Ghana, hospital, blah, 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 which is even debatable. But I'm not asking you to cite past glories. Ghanaians have already uh, passed a verdict on it. What based we are superior management. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And the they, verdict was yeah. based on hope. And, 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 they still and the, hope, the hope that they passed Sweeney. their verdict on Sweeney. is what we are discussing Sweeney. today. And they still effect. booted you out by over one, almost one million votes. Because you promise votes. better. Almost one million votes. So please, and this what is Ghanaians want to hear is not your living in your old glories. What Ghanaians want to hear is progressive new solutions. That's what Ghanaians are asking. Now, talking about profits, Bank of Ghana making profits is not unique to the NDC. As recent as 2019, there was a profit made of 1.6 billion. 2020, a profit of 1.5 billion. 2021, a profit of 1.4 billion. So, you making profits and citing them, it's not peculiar to NDC. It's even happened under now, a central bank incurring loss is not equal to or is not the same as mismanagement. The world over, there are several central banks 
that have recorded losses in a particular year. In fact, one of the duties of central banks is to step in and save a government if there are challenges. That is why the law talks about temporary advances. That is why the law talks about emergency funding of government. Because the law envisioned that there will be times where the government will need liquidity support. So if a central bank comes in to support a government, that is not the same as mismanagement. So let's not confuse people and equate a loss in a particular year where preceding years saw profit as mismanagement. So it was the same Addison who was there in the years I have cited where we made profits. So it was Addison mismanaging it then? So please, let's not make these comments. And then on the inflation, Suhini, the facts are there. As recent as December 2021, Ghana was recording an inflation rate of about 10%. We all saw when the inflation issues occurred. And I've given you the evidence, unless you have contrary evidence, to buttress what you are saying. Which evidence? The evidence. point is that it was in third quarter 2022 that we saw the upsurge in inflation. Because the now, borrowing... The, no, the, the, the government nothing, financing started nothing, in 2021. No, it didn't. No, it didn't. It didn't. And they say, go and check the Bank no, of Ghana's I, I, own annual I'm and financial... And so, you are sitting here, so you are the repository I'm of knowledge? No, I'm not. I'm not. I can't be. You are actually in parliament. They say, go and look at the no, Bank of Ghana see, annual... You are actually in parliament, so I expect you to even know more. Report. Even and financial more. statement. Now, now, look at now, it. Now, now, I sat here and said... Uh, I'm trying to check it now. Let, let, me, let me quickly <laughs> do this. I sat here and said that our first financing was asset management purchase in 2020 of 10 billion. Now, they claim, one of the reasons why they are going on the demonstration is the claim that the Ministry of Finance never, emphasis on never, informed Parliament of the advances BOG made to the government. I am sitting here and telling you that it's palpable falsehood. Let me read to you a statement from Ministry of Finance to Parliament. Parliamentary Memorandum on Bank of Ghana Asset Purchase Program as part of COVID-19 Relief Bond Program. Asset management essentially means purchasing non-marketable bonds. Non-marketable bonds is simply bonds that are designed for just government. It's not for the, uh, the normal financial market. So that's for those who may not know. So Bank of Ghana Asset Purchase Program as part of COVID-19 Relief Bond Program on, listen to my, my brother, 27th May 2020, Kendo mm -hmm. for Now here, in fulfillment of the requirements of Section 30 of the Bank of Ghana Act 2002, Act 612 as amended. Now bullet point one, introduction. This parliamentary memorandum serves to submit to Parliament the report on government's decisions to access emergency financing from the Bank of Ghana consistent with the provisions in Section 30 of the Bank of Ghana Act 2002 as 612 as amended. Then it proceeds to detail out, when you read uh, point 9, mm -hmm. summary of terms of the Bank of Ghana Asset Purchase Program. Program details. COVID-19 Relief Bond Program. Program size. 10 billion Ghana cities, 10 years, 10 years with two-year moratorium, P repayment, amortization with moratorium, principal and interest to be to stop to be paid, uh, interest rate floating, currency, Ghana CD. This was submitted to Parliament May 27, 2020. And do you see the contradiction? What contradiction did it I It tells mean? us that the, the Bank of Ghana didn't, the government didn't borrow in 2021. No, I said 20, I'm talking about 2020. He said that. Didn't no, borrow. I'm talking about. And then ah. he was outlining what the borrowing in 2020. I think that was a slip. He had, he had compared no, it. He, he said 2021. He, he said 2020, 2021. And no, he said there was no so borrowing was in 2021. Yeah, but what have I said contrary? I don't get you. You are saying that the finance minister yeah. outlined Sent the borrowing in 2020. Parliament. Yes, this is 2020. Assuming without admitting that he informed Parliament, you are saying he outlined the borrowing in 2020 and the no, borrowing started no, in 2021. No, ah, no, you are not getting me, Suhini. The law that requires that in the same year, mm -hmm. 
the minister goes to parliament to inform parliament of relief or assistance or liquidity from BOG. The Bank of Ghana. This is the same year. I'm saying May 20. So this is a, this is a report on the borrowing in 2020. Yes, in the same year. And not 2020. I even cited. No, I. Okay, so you proceed. Information proceed, sent proceed. to Parliament. I will, I will write it right. here you, is related to asset purchase program of in 2020. In 2020. And, and it was submitted in, in 2020. May, May 2020. No. That's what I'm saying. I'm not talking about 2021. Right. <laughs> I'm not talking about 2021. So it is emphatic so here that, now that's, that's, that in 2021, no, no, the government did not borrow from no. the Bank of Ghana. The, now, I, they borrowed 10 billion mm -hmm. in 2020 and then 2022, yes. they also borrowed. But not in 2022. No. Now, 2022, that's, uh, that's 2022 this is the report we, we, we also sent to cover 2022. Uh, uh, it was submitted in February 2023 to Parliament. So the point that I'm making to you is that the world over, central banks step in to protect their government. It is actually one of their duties that in times of crisis, in times of emergency, step in and protect. Bank of Ghana had a peculiar issue, especially in 2022, to step in and support the government. And they did. And it was right that they did. Because the law demands that they do so that we we'll keep the economy in check. Right. I can cite several countries around the world where at the end of the year they report losses because they had to come in and support the government. So there's absolutely nothing wrong with it. If you want to debate mm. about timelines as to when they sent it to parliament, fine, we can debate it. But to sit here and create the impression that this is some, 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 something that dropped from, from, from an imaginary world. Please. Besides, President Bahama took advances from BOG when he was president. He took advances. That time was 10% of revenue. Lastly, let me dispel this falsehood. That's all the monies that we, we incurred the hair, haircut from BOG, uh, gave a haircut, uh, blah, blah, blah. They were all monies Ekufuadu borrowed. No. It is not true. These are monies we've borrowed through domestic purchases of bonds over the years, dating back to even President Kufuadu's time. So the monies in question is not monies Ekufuadu borrowed alone. It includes President Mohammed's loans that he also borrowed. So please, this whole penchant of peddling falsehood and, and lying to people that Ekufuadu came and he took sister billion and he, he, he wrote it off. No, it's not true. It is absolutely not true. That sister billion that they are referencing, a portion of it is the cocoa board, cocoa board bond. Go and check when the cocoa board, cocoa board bond was issued. It was in their time when that bond was issued. In their time when the cocoa board bond was issued. 1.8 billion. Go and ask. So you don't come and sit here and create the impression that somebody came and all the debt right. incurred by Ekufuado. The debt we are referencing, the debt we are talking about, which you took from 9 billion and ballooned it to 121 billion, over 1,000 percent, is part of everything that we are discussing here right. today. Right. Thank you. Very right. Much. Nana Kwame Anjimedu says <laughs> special salute to Kofi Tuntu. He has done great justice to the issues being discussed. Um, Tafa in America says, Kwesi, good morning. Good to see you. It's been a while. Uh, Tafa, good morning to you as well. Kwesi, if they are attacking minority for fighting for ordinary citizens, they will be punished in 2024. And even Dr. Baumia's constituency this time around, will he? not get it he will not get it easy i know every village in dr baumia's constituency a village like uh boguya teneba and bakudo people in those villages are competing water f with cattle because we all know for a fact that the money dr baumia used to buy those Toyota hilux he should have used one <laughs> amount of uh, the hilux to dig two boreholes each in the constituency Tafa Good morning. I hope you are doing well. It's been a long time. I'll link up when I'm done. Yeah. I'll, I'll come back. To the Bank of Ghana. Yes, yes. I'll come back pretty shortly. If we have time, we'll do 
just about two two minutes of um, um, Honorable Osei Chimins' uh, letter in the media space. Stay with us. Different era, better result. Time has changed and time has brought Cal Chocolate Toothpaste, healthy gums, anti cavity, fresher breath, and it whitens teeth. Chocolate toothpaste. Sankofa. Yenchi. Kill chocolate toothpaste. Happy, Happy smile. This advert is FDA approved. Ya mawa kwa ba de ba nadum auto fix and accessories. Aha di e e ba no kaya si si ni e huwa kandi ya. Ube nye bi bi e bi waha. Kaya bi ane ne hao eni ni uhiya. Yansu ye wa huwe ni mdufuwa wa beswa anu yi ya mawa. Nadum auto fix and accessories ye jume di e di e. E ye 24-7 o. Ye si e si e u engine, u brake, battery, ya si sa wo tie. Se ba no car wash di ya. Je wo abe fun fi di e biti se estima ya do ro car engine a bra yon si yon kon engine nim. Ye sa ye detailing me tre se. Ye bi chuchu ka nimu be bi ya ma o. Ye yu ya ya sa pala show ka na ma o kama. E nye wwe nimu kun ya sa to car batteries, ties, rims eni di e keke ka on. Ma nadum auto fix and accessories e ma wo ka e en si ni de de em. Ne yon mwa ju ma ma o. Chuche ye chida kwa yon wa dan suma na sorry dan hon a e ni KFC bon yon nimu e wong kray. Se wo pe information a nan se mbi se bi ya. Fresno 24. Six five one nine three six nine. Now them auto fix and accessories. Who can so young quo pa pa pa? My son, there's more blessing in giving than receiving. Quo, we no fear for you now. And come on, the makers in Sri Lanka who they will. The pneumatological abrasion of the Lord revealed unto me this night that me and my household should go out into the world and bless the world. Makers Electronics Company Limited. I'm up to 67% discount. I was selected appliances as well. And it to make us this year. This is what I call quintessential immaculability. She said the Makers Electronics Company Limited. I will tie for Burkina Highway. I'm a Samai Zongo Junction. I'm a K Pharmacy Dining. Oh, yeah, I'm a Fatima Boga Junction. Ashaman Valko Flat Kumasi Ahinima Koko Bain Asafu Wachi Hospital Janshi
So you welcome back from the break. Um, my time is up, but uh, Mosai Chairman Sabusu, I'm, see, I'm sure you've seen the number of videos going around and uh, the issues of the politics of the NPP and where who comes from and the stakes of each of the um, aspiring flag bearers. Uh, notes that it's the 4th of November, but um, we have the majority leader. I won't go into the details. We have majority leader who has put up a letter. Um, let me start this one with you, Kofi, and in one minute, so maybe one and a half. You, you do justice to it, then I'll round up with it. Yeah, so my issue is very simple. Mm. If you want to lead the MPP, you must protect the MPP. Um, we cannot engage in activities that will break down the system and destroy the system. Let's endeavor to even in the midst of our differences, find ways to talk and figure out how we can solve our problems. We all have issues in the party, my brother. Mm -hmm. Even me, an ordinary person like me in the party, a young boy, I have issues in the party. If I'm to sit here and talk about the issues that I have, if all the young people, all the elderly people in the party, men, women, are to come out and speak I don't think our party can stand. In any political party, people have concerns. The concerns may be addressed. The concerns may not be addressed. And even sometimes when addressed, they may not be addressed in the way and manner you want it addressed. Mm. But it is all part of human institution. You work here at Metro. I'm sure you have your concerns. But you never come and sit on Metro, this platform, and lambast Metro. So we have to endeavor to, 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 to solve our problems internally so that when we finish, we can all come together and move on. So I'll entreat the uh, Honorable Kennedy uh, Japan, uh, Honorable Oseche Mensa Bonsu, and all the other people whose names have popped up. I know today, one to me is going to do a press conference. Mm -hmm. I seriously urge him to be mindful and, and, and think right, about... That time, the rank and file should be able to stop him from... Doing the they should be able to stop everybody, not just one to me. Anybody who goes contrary to our stance, it's not just one to me. Let's not mention just an individual's name, because it's not an individual... They, they are preempting what he would say. Who, uh, in the pre uh, who, who is preempting? Um, some people oh, okay. are preempting what... Um, uh, uh, Mr. Untumi would say, Chairman Untumi would say, we'll say okay. in, in the press conference today, which okay. they think would bring about another round of yeah uh, yeah I, I mean i i really hope that he wouldn't go to that extent we have a party to build we have a a, a, a a victory ahead of us if we want to win if we want to be successful let's come together let's eschew our differences let's solve our differences internally and see how we can move forward together all right let me let me let me have you honorable you know we see as a young person growing up in the 90s, when we began this democratic experimentation, there were many things I didn't know about our country mm. until after 2000. I didn't know them not because they didn't exist, but I didn't know them because they were not highlighted. For example, I didn't know about party contractors. I didn't know about confiscation of uh, vehicles and allocating to party people. Mm. You know, uh, the constructors in Tamale those days, I remember Lidra Construction, you know, who later became vice president to President Kofor. I mean, those were the things. And so for me, when I watch the NPP politics, I am more worried about the levels of law the new levels of law they introduce in our politics every time. You recall the Media Foundation for West Africa in the run-up to the 2016 or so, or 2008, I don't remember, general elections came up with a leaked table of politicians who engage in insults the most. Yes, I remember that one. Go and look at that. Go and look at that leaked table. And you realize that many times... NPP affiliated spokespersons top the chart many times. And so when I listened to Kennedy Ajapon, who until now was celebrated by the NPP for his vitriolic attack, 
I listened to Dr. Mahama, who, but for his attacks on John Mahama, is a nobody in the NPP. Oh, come on. I, I mean, beyond take away <laughs> his attacks on John Mahama, and really, he is a villain. He's oh, he's uh, he's. He's not celebrated beyond so his so ability he, to so attack. He, he's a vice you know, president. Let's, of let's, course, let's, that's let's the truth. Be I respect let's, him as a vice mindful. president and let's, as a senior brother. Let's be mindful, but I'm saying please. that take his attacks, his ability to denigrate and attack John Muhammad away. He has and not, there's very little that the NPP celebrates. And in wrapping Muhammad. up, he in wrapping, wrapping up. So when I look at when I in 30 seconds. When I, oh, please. I think, in 30 seconds. I, I think that's not fair. In 30 seconds. I, I think that's in not 30 fair. Seconds. But you see, I'm looking at the statement that has been issued by Chairman Sabozo mm. in response to what he considers uh, unacceptable things said about him by mm. Kennedy Ajapong. Mm. Mm. And then he refers not directly to Kennedy Ajapong as Philippic. He refers to him as petulant. He refers to him as bellicose as belligerent, as hot-headed, as someone who is not well-focused. And I'm like, well, we have a way of defining, you know, adjectives that are not pleasant in our politics. And it, again, started with, uh, he will not want me to say it. Uh, many people like Kennedy Ajapong himself, the vice president, mm -hmm. now uh, Elijah Ali Muhammad, I mean, I say uh, uh, Elijah uh, Baumia. But when I talk of new laws, you see, this whole thing is about tribal politics and religious politics. Mm -hmm. That is what I am even scared the most about this MPP contest. The vice president went around this country and campaigned on a religious note to become vice president. And we watched on, we supported it. He said, Vote me and I'll swear with the Quran. He said it. I, I haven't heard that. Oh, he used to say that. I, I haven't heard no, that. No, he used to say that in 2016, that people I, should vote I, I, him, I, that on the, I, on the swearing I, in the... That's, that's one I haven't Yeah, heard. maybe you didn't. No, but I, he said, I, I check his campaign. It doesn't mean it didn't happen. The fact that you didn't hear, it doesn't mean it didn't happen. No, no, I, 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 I am saying that you are my senior yes, man yes, when yes, it comes to journalism. I have reported with you. That morning Ghana is brought to you by MTN. The generation of trash happens from homes, industries, offices, 